Hello, I'm Kippy from kippyathome.com. Welcome to my home and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be constructing this really pretty rustic farmhouse reef. We're going to be using burlap and lace for a pretty bow and some pillow ticking, which is very vintage looking with a little bit of vintage looking cotton lace for bows on there. So we're going to just be sewing and putting and then putting it on there. And now it's these pretty little candle holders are made out of leftover pieces and parts from my workshop and I'll be posting that soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And the pretty little reef is hung on my blanket ladder and I will be putting a link to the, my blog post for that very soon so you don't want to miss out. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out using our paper scissors preferably our little template pattern and you can grab that download from below. I folded mine in half and I found the center because I'm using a stripe and I wanted to center my pattern on the stripe. Um, you might choose to do a diagonally or something but I decided I would use the stripe as my pattern. I pinned my little heart template on there and I'm going to show you how to pin through there and then I'm going to bury the sharp point of the pin down into the fabric. I have cut myself so many times sewing and cutting and everything. There we go. Put right in there. Just wanted to jump back on here and give you all a few tips. Now, you can turn this any way you want, but this is the easiest way to cut into a little point like this is to just bring that those scissors right like that and go one way and then the other. But to try to start in that center and then come out of the that part is almost impossible. So that makes a very clean point. I am just leaving my little hearts pinned to the fabric that I just cut out, the little heart I just cut out, and I am just going to, once again, line it up in that blue stripe in the center, and I'm gonna pin this down, still holding onto the, the other thing that's below it, and going to try to make it into a square. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm just kinda of eyeballing it using the stripe as kind of a guide. Now I'm removing the pins from all of it and I'm using my magnetic pen holder and that was easy so now I'm going to pull my little fabric off of there and I am going to turn over my square going to line them up wrong sides together with those blue stripes matching I'm going to pin around that once again I'm going to bury those pin sharp ends back into the fabric so I'm not going to get cut on it so once you get that all pinned, we'll start sewing. I just wanted to show you those are my favorite maker of pins, needles, and I will put a link to that below. I'm using Ecru. Sometimes I use a contrasting color, but today I really just want it kind of be um, rustic, vintage kind of farmhouse. So that's the, the look we're going for. That's why I decided to use the pillow ticking because that is just kind of vintage in and of itself. So I'm splitting it and you can either use two or three pieces of the floss and I can put a link to that below as well. And I'm just gonna pull it all apart. Then I'm gonna thread it and I'm using a cruel needle. You can use that or not. I can put the link for that so you'd see you wanna get one that has a larger eye in it so you can actually thread those thicker threads through there. Once you get it threaded, you're gonna knot it and then you're gonna start between the pins that are pinned with the fabric. And what I mean is there's two pins that I put in there that are the place where I'm gonna leave open because I'm actually gonna stuff this little heart. So I'm gonna start through the back. So I'll have my little knot on the back and right at that pin that's perpendicular to the edge is the one that is going to be one that's holding the spot where I'm actually going to stuff from. So I'm going to go just a running stitch in and out the whole way around until I meet the other perpendicular pin that is holding the spot where I'm actually going to stuff. I'm just going to leave my needle threaded. I'm pulling it through to the back and I'm just going to put it in the fabric just to hold it. 
And now I'm going to use that little opening that I left. And that is where I'm going to stuff a little bit of fiber fill. I'll put a link to that below. And you can see, uh, just kind of stuff it in there and do the part that's furthest away from you first, of course. And that would be the first little um, hump of the heart, top of the heart, then do the other side. And then you can do the little point at the bottom, however it works easiest for you. I guess there's really not a system, but that's what I did. And you can kind of move it around and see how much you want it in there. And you do have to hand stitch it closed, so if it's really puffing out, it's you know really stuffed in there tight, you know, it's gonna be very difficult to, to sew closed. So just kind of feel what it is, and then you can add a wee bit more if you still feel like it, or maybe take a wee bit out. So whatever that comfortable thing is, but make sure it's not lumpy. So if you feel like, see this a little, so I'm, see I'm adjusting it around and then go ahead and pin that closed to just kind of hold that spot and get it nice and neat. And you can kind of line it up with the um, stripes, but don't be so worried about that. Once you get it pinned, you'll be ready to grab that um, needle again and then start right back doing the running stitch until you come to where it's going to be closed and then you're going to pull it through to the back and knot it off and cut it. Once we snip off that stitching, we are going to cut away the extra fabric that formed that rectangle and we're going to just have a pretty little part with no extra fabric make this cute little vintage style heart a little more farmhouse fun I'm gonna add a kind of an ecru piece of cotton lace and I'm just gonna kind of put a knot there I'm gonna use my hot glue gun and I'm just gonna hot glue it right on there so after I get it hot glued on there and I took a look at it and I just decided why not make some that were smaller? So I made a couple of smaller ones, so I'll put the uh, link for that as well at the bottom for the little pattern. So you just cut these off to where you want. You might even put it on the reef first before you decide, but these are cute. You can make a little door hanger out of them. You could do all kinds of things. You could fill them with um, lavender and use them for uh, scented. So here are my little friends, and I just did them the same, same way that I did the bigger one. This amazing rustic reef I purchased from Joann's and got it for 80% off. It's a Christmas reef and I've really had a hard time keeping up with where the center of it was at the top. So I put this little piece of lace in there with a pin to mark it and that has a little hanger in the back, which is really nice. So I'm going to kind of arrange this. I want to do kind of symmetrical but not really want it to be a little asymmetrical my arrangement of the heart and then my bow so I'm just kind of marking placement before I make my bow so I'd see what size and how I wanted to do it so I'm gonna use burlap and lace thought that would be a pretty farmhouse rustic look all right now I'm gonna take my looped part of my bow and I'm gonna place it on the reform to see how long I want those tails to be. So I'm doing that to determine. It's a little bit hard to do after it's made to decide, so we're going to do it now um, where the placement and all that is. So now I'm going to also use a piece that I already cut for, from, for another project and I'm going to, instead of wasting it, I'm going to try to figure out how to use both pieces. So that's going to look great. Now I need to determine what is going to be my center. I decided to use a self fabric or excuse me self ribbon so I'm going to use a piece left over from another project and I'm going to trim in the middle of my loop and then I'm going to just make my center of my bow with that piece I'm going to bend it around and then cut off the extra and then staple it in place just getting another check to make sure I like my bow loop before I move on. So I'm going to use that piece that I mentioned that was from an earlier project and I'm going to use my stapler and I'm going to staple both of my 
tails on. I've just got to, you know, work the placement out. Now I'm going to use my chenille stem or pipe cleaner, they called them back in my day, and I'm going to attach the, the bow to the reef. And this is my little pretty burlap bow that I'm using. As you can see, I use my stapler to make this bow. Um, so it all staples together. It's my favorite part of this kind of bow. Easy peasy. So you definitely want to um, have a stapler on hand for this. So there I am trying to determine that center again. And once I have, yeah, once I get it on there, I'll get it all fluffed up. And the, as you can see, the hearts are just still, they're just pinned on there. I will hot glue them on in a moment. So they'll be so pretty and finished in just a few minutes. It's easy brief to make. Oh, look at that. It's almost finished. I'm in love with it already. I can't wait to see it hung. So just a few minutes, I'll have it hung up for you guys and you can check out how pretty it turned out. I'm so glad you stopped by my channel tonight and decided to pay us a visit. I hope you'll come back and you'll give us a thumbs up and please visit my blog. It's kippyathome.com and I have patterns on there and all kinds of extra goodies on there about decorating and doing home decor and you're going to love my blanket ladder and I'm going to have that reef hung on there in just a few minutes and you can see it. I'm also going to be doing a post about how to make it and have all the templates and patterns and everything there that you want and need. All right, have a great week and I will see you very soon.